Now I want to bring in Greg Jarrett, Fox News correspondent and former defense attorney and now author also of The Russian Hoax, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton and frame Donald Trump. Greg, you're the perfect man for the moment. Uh, let's start with the big headline, the big one. The, you know, of course, people still parsing through all of this, five, almost 600 pages. But the uh, email, the text exchange between Page, where she says Trump's not ever going to become president, right? Right. And then Strzok replied, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. A lot of folks are focused solely on this, is, and it gets back, I guess, to what uh, we just heard with respect to even Christopher Ray saying that there was certainly a lot of bias that was allowed to be fostered there. And the bias tainted the investigation and led people to believe, and I think rightly so, that the fix was in. There's one line I'll just read to you here that's, that's the most important with respect to Strzok. It says... It is not only indicative of a biased state of mind, but more seriously implies a willingness to take action to impact the presidential candidate's uh, electoral prospects. So this is basically saying he is so severely biased uh, that he was willing to take action to influence the election by clearing Hillary Clinton and framing Donald Trump. Right. Well, some are saying or suggesting that that willingness was actually, there's evidence of it uh, in practice when uh, the New York FBI became aware of, uh, of Anthony Weiner having access to up right. to 300,000 of Hillary Clinton's email messages, letting Washington, D.C. know, and then uh, not long after that, struck who's in charge of this entire operation, uh, reassigning folks from the Hillary Clinton email case to the Donald Trump Russia case. I mean, you know, you don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to wonder why they did that when they had such an amazing smoking gun on someone who could have potentially been our next president. Because he was trying to hurt Trump and help Hillary Clinton. And the inspector general found that Strzok essentially slow walked that for an entire month until he could hide it no more. Uh, and so yet another example of Peter Strzok and his abiding hatred of Trump and his favoritism toward Hillary Clinton intruding on the presidential election. So let's talk about the key players in all of this. What happens now to, to James Comey? Well, Comey's reputation is left in utter tatters. Uh, he is bruised, battered, and beaten up by the inspector general report that found he mishandled the Clinton case. He broke rules, violated policy, he was insubordinate, and he usurped power. This from a sanctimonious guy who's mm. peddling a book about truth and lies. His name now is synonymous with dishonesty mm. and incompetence and bias. You know, Even though the inspector general says, look, I cannot actually prove with documentary, documentary evidence or testimony that he allowed his bias to dictate his decision. You know, there's a lot of people who question why he would have come out with the book before this. Maybe that's why. I do want to ask the impact, potential impact on a Mueller investigation. Well, it does have an impact because Peter Strzok was the top investigator in the Mueller case before his texts were revealed and he was canned. What damage did he do? We just don't know. But the finding here that uh, Comey mishandled the case and usurped power and deserved to be fired takes the air and the wind out of the sails of any claim that, that Trump obstructed justice in the firing of James Comey. This substantiates the president's In your mind, decision. this vindicates President Trump? It does, on obstruction.